Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 15th of April. India sees 949 new COVID cases, six deaths, capital worried with infection spike in recent days. Pakistan military dismisses Imran Khan's theory US conspired to oust him as PM. And Christians in India observe Good Friday with prayers and processions. And now for all the details. India on Friday reported 949 new coronavirus infections, taking the total tally of COVID-19 cases to over 43 million, while the active cases rose to 11,191, according to the Health Ministry data. Amid an uptick in daily cases in capital New Delhi and the positivity rate going beyond 2%, the Delhi Disaster Management Authority will hold a meeting on April 20. The discussion will likely be held on imposing further restrictions or consider reimposing the mandatory use of face masks. India reported 949 new COVID-19 cases on Friday, taking the coronavirus tally to 43,039,974. According to the Health Ministry, the country also reported six deaths in the last 24 hours, bringing the total number of fatalities to 521,742. The number of active cases of COVID-19 currently stands at 11,191. The daily positivity rate was recorded at 0.26% and the weekly positivity rate was 0.25%, according to the Health Ministry. Coronavirus cases are on the rise in several states including Delhi, National Capital Region, Mumbai and Gujarat. Delhi on Thursday reported 325 fresh COVID-19 cases, which is the highest in 40 days. Delhi government issued guidelines for schools on Thursday. Amid reports of some school students testing positive for the virus in the city, as well as in neighboring Noida city of Uttar Pradesh state, the government advised the schools to shut down the concerned wing or the entire school in case positive cases are reported. Delhi's deputy chief minister said there is nothing to panic or worry about at the moment. He said the COVID-19 situation in the national capital will be reviewed in the next DDMA, Delhi Disaster Management Authority meeting. No, we will review the whole situation. The DDMA meetings are the most important thing is that the experts, who are spread on the whole world, 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 they keep a picture of the government. They become a government, then they get a lot of help from them. DDMA will hold a meeting next Wednesday to discuss measures to control the spread of COVID-19 in the national capital. Reports suggest that the officials might discuss the implementation of mandatory mask rule that was junked on 2nd of April. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's military has ousted Prime Minister Imran Khan's accusation that the United States had conspired to topple him in a parliamentary vote of confidence. Khan initially blocked the no-confidence move, saying a forum of civil and military leaders and the National Security Committee had endorsed the alleged conspiracy. He was eventually removed from office on Sunday. Pakistan's military on Thursday dismissed ousted Prime Minister Imran Khan's accusation that the United States had conspired to topple him in a parliamentary vote of confidence. The military spokesman Major General Babur Iftikhar in a news conference clarified that the word conspiracy was not used in the statement issued after a meeting of the National Security Committee last month. جیسے میں نے کہا اعلامیہ کے اندر بڑے واضح الفاظ میں لکھا ہوئے کہ کیا تھا اور کیا نہیں تھا اس کے اوپر آپ واضح طور پر دیکھ سکتے ہیں اگر کہیں اگر ادھر کانسپریسی کا لفظ ہے کیا اس اعلامیہ میں میرا نہیں خیال سکسٹی نائن یر رول خان ہو لیڈ در نیوکلیر آمد ساؤدی ایشن کنٹری آف ٹو ہنڈر ٹوئنٹی ملین پیپل فور تری این ہاف یرز اکیوزڈ واشنگٹن آف بیکنگ ہی ساؤسٹر بیکاس ہی ایڈ ویزٹڈ Khan initially blocked the no-confidence move, saying a forum of civil and military leaders, the National Security Committee, had endorsed the alleged conspiracy. Pakistan's lower house of parliament eventually voted in favour of removing Khan from office on Sunday. PMLN leader Shahbaz Sharif took oath as the 23rd Prime Minister of Pakistan on Monday.
Meanwhile, U.S. State Department spokesperson Ned Price in a presser once again refuted Imran Khan's allegations and said the U.S. government agreed with the military spokesperson's statement. The message has been clear and consistent on this. There is no truth whatsoever to the allegations that uh, have been put forward. Uh, we support the peaceful upholding of constitutional and democratic principles, uh, including respect for human rights. Ned Price further stated that we do not support one political party over another, whether it is in Pakistan or anywhere else around the world. Many politicians also praised the army's stance and statements given in the presser. Pakistan People's Party Chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari called the press conference a breath of fresh air for democracy. While PMLN Vice President Maryam Nawaz through a Twitter account said Imran Khan's lies had been exposed. Opposition parties and analysts say the military helped Khan win election in 2018, which they both deny. But that support waned after a falling out over the appointment of the country's next intelligence chief late last year. Moving on, scores of political activists and locals held a massive gathering in Gilgit, Baltistan to express their anger over illegal land grabbing cut down on subsidies, frequent load shedding and undermining of fundamental rights of the people in the illegally occupied region. Members of the Awami Action Committee and scores of locals in Gilgit, Baltistan recently held a massive gathering to raise their voices against illegal land grabbing, cut down on subsidies, frequent load shedding and undermining of fundamental rights of the people in the illegally occupied region. The protesters also highlighted that despite soaring inflation, there have been incidents of black marketing of food items and shortage of wheat, and they are being forced to pay double the prices for essential commodities. There have been several protests over these issues in recent months, but Pakistan, which rules the region through a proxy, continues to ignore the people's plight. Locals in Gilgit, Baltistan have long blamed Islamabad for depriving them of their basic rights, claiming that the agenda is to keep the region underdeveloped. In news from Afghanistan, an independent non-profit policy research organization in Afghanistan in its latest report said banning the cultivation of opium and the export of opiates would be grievous blow to the economy as the country has already lost most of its other foreign income in the form of on and off budget support since the Islamic Emirates swept into power last August. Taliban this month banned drug cultivation including lucrative opium in Afghanistan. The Afghanistan Endless Network on an independent non-profit policy research organization in a report released on Thursday predicted that the ban on the cultivation of opium in the country will have wide-ranging consequences. The report said banning the cultivation of opium and the exports of opiates would be another grievous blow to the economy as the country has already lost most of its other foreign income in the form of on and off budget support both civilian and military, since the Islamic Emirates swept into power last August. The opiates industry supports the stability of the local currency, the Afghani, and provides a much-needed financial boost to the country as a whole, according to the AN. The Taliban's supreme leader earlier this month banned the cultivation of narcotics in Afghanistan, the world's biggest opium producer. The order said the production, use or transportation of other narcotics was also banned. The Taliban banned poppy growing towards the end of their last rule in 2000 as they sought international legitimacy but faced a popular backlash and later mostly changed their stance, according to experts. Afghanistan's opium production, which the UN estimated was worth 1.4 billion US dollars at its height in 2017, has increased in recent months, reports suggest, as the country's dire economic situation prompted residents of southeastern provinces to grow the illicit crop that could bring them faster and higher returns than legal crops such as wheat. In news from Sri Lanka, protests in Sri Lankan capital Colombo demanding President Gotabaya Rajapaksa's resignation intensified on Friday as the island nation faces its worst economic crisis in decades.
Besides acute shortages of fuel, food and medicines, people are also struggling with skyrocketing inflation. Protest against Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajpaksa's government over the worst economic crisis in decades intensified in capital Colombo on Friday. Sri Lanka is struggling with low reserves that have declined more than 70% over the past two years to 1.93 billion US dollars. The dollar crunch has caused acute shortages of fuel, food and medicines, along with rolling power cuts fueling anger amongst the masses, who have been protesting for over a month now. Besides the shortages, people are also struggling with skyrocketing inflation. Especially uh, no electricity, no gas uh, and uh, no milk powder and there are a lot of, uh, actually we don't have dollars, so we are facing big troubles. But uh, this Polish uh, people, Rajapaksha uh, gang, they are not uh, leaving their post, that's the, that's the main reason, it's all people uh, shout for they are go to go home. All the large functions, they are, they are sons, they are neighbors, all are in the, uh, our parliament. So from now on, they print money and money and money. Uh, they don't think about the other people. Mired in the economic crisis, Sri Lanka has halted all external debt payments ahead of negotiations with the International Monetary Fund on April 18 for a loan program. Meanwhile, the main opposition party has signed a no-confidence and impeachment motion against the government, which is expected to be handed over to the Speaker when the Parliament resumes on April 19. Christians across India observed Good Friday by offering prayers and taking out processions. Good Friday, also called Holy Friday or Black Friday, is a religious event commemorating the crucifixion and death of Jesus Christ. Christians across India thronged churches in large numbers and attended holy masses and took out processions to observe Good Friday. According to Christian theology, Good Friday, also called Holy Friday, Great Friday or Black Friday, is a religious event observed primarily by Christians commemorating the crucifixion and death of Jesus Christ. Devotees in New Delhi and Mumbai cities attended the church rituals and meditated on the historical significance of the crucifixion. For Christians all over the world, Good Friday commemorates the act that brought salvation to all who believe in Jesus. His death is a blessing for us. His death brings us redemption, salvation to entire humanity. Good Friday is the culmination of the Lent for the Roman Catholics as well as the Holy Week, which is observed on Palm Sunday, and it takes place two days before the Easter Sunday that is being celebrated this year on April 17th throughout the world. Christians form less than 3% of India's more than 1 billion population. With the watermelon season here, Bangladesh's capital Dhaka is now brimming with the summer cash crop. The green striped watermelons with red pulp have now been flowing in abundance into both the wholesale and the retail shops in Dhaka. Wholesalers of watermelons in the old part of Dhaka said they are witnessing brisk business, with sales having gone up significantly due to the Muslim holy month of Ramadan, which started here on April 3. The demand for the seasonal fruit goes up with the rising temperature. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.